I'm here with Chad Clayton from Reef Nutrition. Reef Nutrition is known for a lot of things. One of them is your tigger pods, but do those actually grow in your tank? Because I'm always getting questions about all these different types of pods. Yeah, so that's that's one of the biggest questions we get. Um, and you know, tigger pods are our most popular product. Uh, a lot of people uh, purchase them to feed to mandarin dragonettes and pipefish and seahorses, and some people even breed them for aquaculture. Uh, but typically, tigger pods do not survive long term in an aquarium. Okay. Um, they are very, they're a very conspicuous animal, large and red, <laughs> and they tend to crawl on surfaces in, instead of getting into the, into the nooks and crannies. Um, their reproduction is a little bit slower than some of the other copepods um, on the market. And, and so, yeah, people typically buy them to just feed to their fish, you know, provide a food source for the mandarin dragonette. Um, and it's, it's just one of those products that we pump out every week and you can find them in local fish stores and, and uh, a lot of people relying them to, uh, to feed these finicky fish. So. so they're not gonna grow in our tank, it's just like a dose and feed it as a treat to the fish. Right, yeah, and, and if you add them at the right time, so typically when you wanna add copepods is when the lights are out, you know, you turn off all your flow and you can add them to the tank, that way they don't get gobbled up as they're in the water column. Okay. Um, and a lot of people actually target feed them using target feeding devices and shoot them into like the reef rock or into their substrate if they've got large gravel substrate. Okay. Um, and then another place to put them is a refugium. You know, there's no fish in a refugium. So you can actually foster a population in a refugium as long as you're, you know, providing them with enough habitat and feeding them things like phytoplankton. Which you guys have. Feeds. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we're famous for is our Phyto Feast, which is a six species blend of phytoplankton. Um, we sell a live version and a non-live concentrated version. Uh, and it's uh, the most concentrated phytoplankton on the product or on the market. Um, we actually are a phytoplankton farm in California. Uh, we grow about 1.5 million gallons of phytoplankton and we sell algae all over the world to a number of people. So if I have a refugium, turn off the flow, put in the pods, put in some phyto, walk me through that. Right, so adding them to a refugium is uh, basically people that, if they're gonna buy the tigger pods, you're gonna let them warm up to room temperature okay. with the cap off. Um, we pack about 3,000 in a bottle. And then once they're warmed up to room temperature, you're just gonna put them in the fuge, dump the whole bottle in. You know, you can dip it in, in the water and get the rest of them out of there. And then as far as feeding them goes, you're gonna wanna feed them small amounts of phytoplankton um, every day. Uh, and we recommend one teaspoon per 100 gallons per day as a starting recommendation. And this isn't just for the, the pods, you know, you're also feeding the corals in the display tank because the phytoplankton will get pumped around and recirculated. So it's okay um, to let it go so, through the tank. I don't want right, to turn off the flow. Right, and the cool thing about feeding the refugium is, is you're adding that dose to the refugium, which is a smaller volume. Right. And so it's much more concentrated food in there. Uh, so the pods can have more access to the food uh, okay. and, and then it starts making its way through your system. Got it, okay. And that's every day you said? Yeah, yep, that's typically what people do, is, is every day. I mean, these animals on a reef are eating every single day. They're eating all day long. Um, when we grow them at the farm, we actually have them set up on, on dosers, and they're fed every hour on the hour. It's all automated. Because um, we found that the best way to feed life feed organisms is small amounts as many times a day as you can. So we grow them in either our, if we grow the chicker pods, either in a culture or in our fusium, how do we get them into our tank. We just put rubble so, in there. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, some people will will take rocks or sponges and and leave that in the refugium, uh, you know, for like a couple of weeks. And some of those, some of the animals, the population in that refuge in the refugium will colonize that that structure. And then you can just move it into your display tank, and and you know those those animals will make their way into the into the reef rock or the pods, or fish will just pull up and start eating the pods right out of it. You know, mandarins are are pretty smart and they can figure out a routine pretty fast. So if you're done for you kind of guy like me, you just dose the pods. If you want to grow them in your effusium, you got to hit them with that little bit of phyto. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And, and pods benefit from phytoplankton in general. So yeah, it's, it's good to dose to your tank and, and your corals will eat it as well, so. I got work to do. Thanks, Chad. Thank